34. Die Rede ist von The Lipstick, Christian Kist. Christian Kist bekommt es zu tun mit dem erfolgreichsten Spieler aus dem deutschsprachigen Raum überhaupt. Er hat sich unwahrscheinlich entwickelt in den letzten anderthalb Jahren 2016. Ein European Tour Turnier gewinnen können, das von Riesa. Er stand im Finale der European Darts Championship. Und er ist längst einer aus den Top 10, die aktuelle Nummer 8 der Welt aus Wien. The Gentle Mensur Suljovic. Mensur Suljevic gives it a full double gilding and bows to this capacity crowd here at the Osterman Arena in Leverkusen ahead of his opening game at the Happy Bet European Darts Open. The world number seven, the best player in Austria, the best player ever to come from a German-speaking part of the world. In action on the big stage, looking to make the final day of the tournament, but taking on a former champion of the world in Christian Kist, the lipstick. Dan Dawson in the commentary box for this one, Paul Nicholson alongside me. We've just seen the first seeded player of the evening knocked out of the tournament, the Diamond Ian White, bested by the King. Merving King with 101 average, what a night for the Merverts. Will it be a night of Mensor mania as well, Paul? That is the question. It's always a night for Mensor mania. Always. Intriguing game, as always, with Mr. Sulevic, and what he brings to the table is consistency. He's as consistent as, as a smooth Gordon Ramsay gravy. <laughs> it's very consistent. <laughs> of course. Of course, that old saying. Wow. Mensor's been different gravy for quite some time now, hasn't he? Up to world number seven, ahead of the great Phil Taylor. Win him on the Euro Tour last year, seeded number two for the European Thank Championship as well. First leg is Mensur to throw first. Game on. And Mensur will kick things off, throwing first in this opening leg. The number three seed, Mensur Suljevic. His familiar little jiggle of the darts before he throws it. Playing quicker now, isn't he, Mensur? He, he's a, he does change his pace, doesn't he? But he's, he's not actually very slow when he doesn't when he's not consciously trying to be. Not really that slow a player. He's an awkward looking player. 81. Previously, he was hard to beat because he's, his pace was so erratic. Now he's just hard to beat because he's really good. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, he's always had talent, hasn't he? But I mean, over the last two years, it's been incredible watching Mensor Silivic rise and rise and continue to rise. Six. We've got Mensa Mania in the European Tour. So mm -hmm. Germany, Gibraltar, of course, where he made the final, and Austria, his, his home. 121. What about Mensa Mania for Cardiff? Champions League darts, it is a possibility. He's in the top seven. Yeah, that's it. It's going to be defending champion Phil Taylor and the top seven in the world. Now, Phil Taylor could be in the top seven if he goes to the match play. 140. And wins it, for example. Now, he's going to have to do pretty well. He's going to have to go beyond the semi final, I think, isn't it? I think, yes, he's defending that semi, semi final. He's beaten by Fair James Wade two years ago. There is a bit of extra money this year in the match play. They've increased the prize money. It's 115 grand for the winner. So if, if Phil Taylor did make it a 16th world match play crown to match his hall of world titles, then Phil Taylor is Whoa. going to be established in that top eight in the world. And that top seven plus the defending champion thing is taken out of the equation. But Mentor could well find himself, he could go and win the match play, Matt. Whoa. Could find himself all the well. top four. Imagine the repercussions in continental Europe if he wins the match split. Oh. The repercussions in the Premier League, trouble 20 for tops. 22. Oh dear. Just I can see that from the gentle. You don't. 140, we've already seen today. From Mark Walsh, what a shot that was. That was arguably the shot of the day. Trouble 20 tops, tops. That's Wasn't enough to help 69. overcome Gerwin Price though. He's beaten 6-4. 79 for Mensur, 20 for Tops. Plenty of room to the right. 
the left. left. Doesn't it? Hit. And Christian Kist can break the throw here if he finds double top. It's a good mark of that. Still Wade Orban. No score. Well, it was a good field goal. He split four. the two. Unfortunately, he didn't do what he meant to do, which was hit the double. Sudovic, two more dots in hand, can finish this leg. Gonna need the anchor dart. 30. Well, well, well. Mensur Sulevic, usually one of the most deadly doublers in the game, has started off by missing a handful of darts for this opening leg. But Kist is doing the same. Okay, Finally, so somebody leg. hits a double. Christian it's 1 0 Christian Kist with a break. Second leg is Christian to throw first. Well, Sulevic has given himself Game a on. telling off next to the drinks table. But you can't get too angry with yourself, Mensur. Got to keep your composure and get back in this game. Winner of this one will face Joe Collins. Nice. Very impressive earlier on this afternoon was the Yorkshireman. Beat Christoph Ratajski from 2-0 down, winning the last six legs on the spin. Ratajski still averaged 97, but Cullen, his average was pushing 100. Nice. And it was a masterclass from Joe Cullen at taking out the right shots at the right time. He's been doing that a lot lately, hasn't he? He really has. He had a 160 finish last week against nice Tim nice. Billion, and, mm, which yeah. was nothing short of delicious. Really was. Bo Cullen still searching for a first run to a final on the European Tour. Made the semi-finals a couple of times, including very recently. 100. In Austria just last weekend. Kist having the better of the opening exchanges here. 125. He had a pretty decent performance yesterday against Zoran Lertzpacker. And let's not forget that Christian's been playing since Thursday afternoon, really. Qualifying Thursday, played yeah. yesterday, playing today. Six. That's three days in a row. And Christian's had well-documented problems with joints and, mm. you know, various ailments. That will take its toll on his body. 90. It's probably more difficult for Christian to play long days than most people on the circuit but he'll grit it out 45 Christian Ewing won 95 95 for Kist well doesn't need to do anything like double 55. double there with Mensor back on 200 he's not got his scoring's not been brilliant his finishing has been poor by his own standards this is not the start to this match that Mensor Sulevic would have wanted as the Icelandic chant echoes around the Osterman Arena. And Kirk Levins' voice echoes around the Osterman Arena as well because it's game shot and the leg. Christian Kist 2 0 up and Kist. We, we talked about Mensor and how he's risen up to world number seven. Right? He is one of the most dangerous players to be drawn against in any format. Christian Kist kind of has his number going on their previous meeting. They've met five times. Mensor has only won one. And that was in Barnsley last summer. He's lost since. He lost a semi-final. You know that weekend at the Pro Tour just before the Grand Prix. Christian Kist went all the way to the final. He beat Mensor in the semis. Ended up being beaten by Simon Whitlock right there. What a... Some, no, I don't think it was. Simon Whitlock beat Ronnie Hybrex, that was it. Yeah, it's a peculiar one, isn't it? Sometimes you just find that playing a certain individual, you don't feel comfortable. 145. It was Michael Van Gerwen who beat Christian Kiss that day. I apologise. But, yeah, very, very strange. That Christian Kiss has such a good record against a man who has, you know, just been rising and rising and rising up the world rankings. Mensur Sulevich, look what he's left. He thought it was in. He, he did walking. think that was in. Right, what is going on? Where is Mensur Sulevich? Who is this imposter? This is a pod person. Who's got the voodoo doll? Because that doesn't happen. This is, I mean, there may be somebody else out there who looks exactly like Mensur Sulevich and throws exactly like Mensur Sulevich. I can't imagine that there is. Looks like Mensur. Seven. But he's not throwing darts like Mensur. I can't remember the last time I saw him go for double seven. I really can't remember. He usually doesn't need to, does he? 
Exactly. It's 41. Occasionally he might go for it seven. if he's had a treble 18. He's looking to single to leave ball. How does, how does the scene go? Something's rotten in Denmark. Well, we're going to Denmark next season. Oh, Mensah wants his double two. Three scores. Hasn't got it. Mitsu Selinic has missed more darts at double in the first three legs of this game than he's missed in entire matches of the European Tour. He's missed in, in entire days at the European Tour. Possibly even entire tournaments at times. There it is, Mensur. Who, well, it's, a, it's a new one in the Mensur Sulevich celebration where he just sort of headbutts his own shoulder. Twins it with a bit of a weightening of the brow. Mm -hmm. 85. I think he's probably the only person who could knock some sense into Mensur. Yeah. Because I'm not going to pick on him. Yes, well, he's a bit of a lump. Finally, hits a double at the 12th time of asking, believe it or not. There we go, he hit the bullseye. What's curious to me is that players like Zulevich and Christoph Ratajski is another one. Look at the end of the flight of Mensah Zulevich on the board. Oh, the they are bitten down. They've been battered in the practice room. Mm. I would say no, 9 not. out of 10 dark players would change them, put a fresh set in for a match. Look at Christians. Yeah. Pristine. Just out the packet. Zulevich Six. isn't like that. I think he keeps them in if he's practicing well. Him and Ritaisky do that, and I can't think of anybody else who does. Well, it's it's Six. it could cost him. I know this is a, a particular bugbear of the great two-time world match play champion Rod Harrington, who always used to pick up on the state of players' flights. Because if they are a little bit dog-eared, and you do just catch well, them because it's a frayed edge and it, it deflects your dart, it might cost you 20 points, it might cost you 60, that might cost you a leg, it might cost you a match. It's a tiny, tiny little thing. But we're talking tiny, tiny margins that can change darts matches. And you've got to give yourself the best possible opportunity. Well, we are talking about a game of millimetres. And if you want to go even further than that, it's a game of microns. Microns, that's exactly what dart flights are measured in. Looks like a 75 to 100 micron flight, more likely a 100 microns. Now then. Bang in the middle. Mensor's hitting his doubles again. And he was wondering where that was. And he chumped us away to himself. I love watching this man. Well, that was a ta-da moment, wasn't it? There you are. I think I'll leave double 16 from now on, he says. That is a very good way to get back in this match. You know what? Mensor being Mensor, it would not be surprising if having missed the first 11 darts at double, he does not miss a single dart at double for the rest of the match. He might not get that many more. Christian Kist could snuff out his hopes of making the final day of action and third round meeting with Joe Cullen. Do you know of any other famous Mensors? No, no, he's no. the only one. There is only one Mensor. There is only one Mensor, thankfully. But he's good enough. There's a few Christians. We've had a lot of Christians lately, haven't we? Christian Bunzer. Yes. Christian Cullinger. 139. There's only one Phil Taylor. Six. He's retiring. So they're going to have to start singing about someone else. I'm not sure they will. I think they'll just carry on singing it. It's, they've, they've learned the words. They like the song. I mean, they've been singing that for the last five years of the Euro Tour. And, and Phil Taylor, you know, he has won four titles. But, I mean, the last couple of years, he's only appeared once. They still sing it. Six. Then. It's a good song. It's catchy. 137. One short of the Della. Trouble 19 will set it up perfectly. Sulevich having another uncharacteristic leg here. 59. However, he sticks in a 140. Could be pressure on. Maybe even a 180. Maybe. 140. 140 it is, and 140 does put the pressure on. 78 for Christian Kist. 
Oh, now then, trouble 19. Does not get it. Mensor Sulevich will look at the 81. Now, what route is Mensor going here? Is it going to be the standard trouble 19? Is it going to be trouble 15? Sometimes players go the bullseye just to guarantee a dart at. He's not sure. He doesn't know, does he? Genuinely doesn't know. Look at the eyes. It's 19, so 12 and ball. Bullseye for 3-2 lead for Sulevich. Instagram worthy, that's so Sylvester much in the middle. The These off. soft tip players love a bullseye. And Mensor Sulevic. Well, first 11 darts at double. 83. Some of them were way off. He is now taking out double two, double 16, and the bullseye dead in the center of the bullseye. First dart. And this is Mensor. This is the, the Mensor we had for the first two legs. 98. Well, two and a half legs. I don't know who he was, but he's gone now. We have the real gentle bat. He said he had some sort of doppelganger in his that's place. It, yeah, and that's the only explanation I can find. Maybe it was a hologram, just like Red Dwarf. Well, it could well be. It could well be. But this is the real mentor. Still only averaging 80, but I mean, that's going to happen when you can't hit a double no, for two and a half legs. Despite repeated attempts. Sometimes with great players, we need reminders that they're human beings and not machines. And we've had that with James Wade nice. recently. He's yep. shown that he is human. What about when Phil Taylor lost to Andy Callaby? That showed that he was human. And Van Gerwen, you know, the Rene Idam's game at the World Championships. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, that uh, you, you look for a, an example of Michael Van Gerwen being human. You still struggle to find one where he loses. I mean, if any items took six out of seven legs, he still lost the game to Michael Van Gerwen. But MVG, this is the thing, in this period of dominance that Michael Van Gerwen is having, all right, he's not won every single tournament, winning most of the big ones. The only time where he's failed to win a major TV tournament is the Champions League, the inaugural one last year, which Phil Taylor, not only did Phil Taylor beat him in the Whoa. final, he beat him in the group stage as well. Even twice over the weekend to fill the power Taylor and of course we will be seeing those two go at it again in the Champions League this year with Taylor back to defend his title and MVG 50. pretty sure he's going to be in that top I think he might just be there yeah, sneaking Mensor Sulevich looking at 107 now it's got to be trouble 20 hasn't it oh he would have left double 14 oh he slacked off 148 well, 148. Every time he's gone for a big finish, he's been low on that 60, Christian Kist. Hasn't given himself an opportunity. 63. Will be treble 13. Gets it. Double 12. And a battling Sulevic in this match has double 12 for a 4 2 lead. That's more like it. Very good. Last few legs, his doubles have been impeccable. Yeah, I mean, I, I was... My tongue was in my cheek slightly when I said after missing the first 11 darts at double, he might not miss a dart at double for the rest of this match, Mensor Sulevich. But, it, it, I mean, it wasn't said completely in jest. And so far, he has hit every single double, first time of asking for the last four legs. Including that one Whoa. plumb in the middle of the bullseye. And you just get the feeling that that may well continue. Mansour Sulevich, I mean, you, you've, got to, you've got to fancy at the Grand Prix that this man is right up there in, in the most likely winners because he's doubling anywhere on the board is impossible. Normally. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter who you are. I mean, it's looking like he's going to be seeded for the World Grand Prix, but no matter who you are in that draw, you get Sulevich. That You're... is an absolute landslide draw. You do not want it. Yeah, it is. It is a very, very tough. You don't. Well, you don't want to get drawn against Mensur Sulevich in, in anything. I mean, you know, last year the European Tour, he was the second best player if you look at, at the stats at the money earned, and he won his first PDC title. Of course, he's still searching for a second one. Keeps going close, but justified his second place in the seedings at the European Championship by making it all the way to the final, only losing to the top seed Michael Van Gogh. But he beat Phil Taylor along the way and, and beat him quite convincingly despite, you know, a, a good performance from the power. I think it was 104 average from Mensur in that game. 
And that was something that Mensour was unable to do. Every time he came come up against Taylor, who was his hero in darts, he kept getting beaten and beaten heavily. But that is a maximum for Mensour Sullivan, his first of this game. He has turned it around in terms of the doubling. Oh, need of the treble 18. They turn it around in terms of the Dublin Mensal Sully, but he starts adding the score, and this will be over very quickly. But 66. Trouble 10 for double 18. Not missing doubles, is he? Oh, he is. There we go. He's missed one. Third. And he's missed another. That was tricky, you know. When that went in, the size of the board, it kicked to the left, it made it very, very awkward. Seven, Nothing awkward Chris about double 13 when you're a right-hander, it's a Eight great Chris double. First. He Demo. kissed is scrapping. And it's a break back for Christian Kist, who'd lost four legs on the spin, and he's right back in this game. The difference between 4-3 and 5-2 is absolutely monumental. Mensor Sulevich, two darts missed for a 5-2 lead, and you would have thought a place in the last 16 pretty much in the bag. Not the case anymore. Sixty. Well, you don't steamroll all of your opponents in world darts. You really don't. Sometimes you've got to work hard, play your B game, and just do enough. And that is what, what Mensa Zulovic is having to do tonight. Yeah, he is. It's not vintage Mensor. But he still has the lead. 140. Ton 40 just gets his nose in front, but not for long. First off from Kist has been much better in the last couple of legs. 180. Well, all three were perfect there for Christian Kist, who fires in his first maximum. He's only had, prior to that, two scores of 140 or more. But maybe it's Kist's turn to come good, and if he does... We could have a shock exit for Mensor Sulevic. Well, last week, in front of a raucous crowd in Vienna, everybody expected 42. Sulevic to beat Mervyn King, and King turned up and silenced every single person in that arena. I think he took great delight in that as well, Merv. Hey, look at the bullseye here. 105. Yeah. The extra Listen, five points for the 25 as compared to a single 20 gets him down to a two-dart finish of 96. Got to use all three darts, Christian Kist, for the 119. Christian Kist hits the bullseye! 4-4! Four, four. And Kist, having seen Mensor hit the ball earlier on for an 81 checkout, takes out the 119 on the ball. And what a finale we've got to this one. Mensor with another 180. Well, it's boiling up nicely. And if you needed proof as to how good these guys are, you're getting it right here. We need proof as to why Christian kissed one lakeside. It was right there in that 119 checkout. That was classy. Yeah, he's he's a gutsy performer, is Christian Kist. Not got a PDC title to his name, but he has had a couple of runs to finals. 105. Pretty recent times, you know, club that one in Ireland, Michael Van Gogh in beating him in the final, beat him convincingly, but he put in some big displays, and of course. He beat Mensor Sulevich along the way. He has four wins in his career against Mensor Sulevich, looking to make it five tonight. But he needs to find a break of throw. And he's 100 points behind in this leg. So it looks as if it might have to be a last leg break of throw Whoa. for Christian Kist, because Mensor's down to a finish. What I like about Mensor's ability to score is just how many times he can get the dart above his guide, but he's found a way of getting it underneath. Yeah, he can go either way, can't it's he? It's unbelievably the tricky how to do that, and he can do it. Here's a good example. Not quite enough, but I'll be back. 56. Well, Kist is looking at three trouble 19s there. 171 leaves double 12. Now he's counting on Sulevic missing this 60. And the perfect 20 here is about maybe a centimetre below tops. That'll do. That was a flyer. 20. Well, Mensor misses two more darts, and the 136 would give Kiss the break of throw that he needs, and he's not going to get it. Mensor has a nice open bed to go for this time. Hasn't got that Whoa. first start in the way as he did in the previous visit. 40. To go within a leg, 
of the last 16 and a meeting with Joe Cullen. Mensor Sulevich, a number three seed, wants tops. Kist is waiting on double 18. Is he going to get a go at it, Kist? Game no, he nine is nine not. Nine and Mensor Sulevich, look at the relief the on the Austrian's face. I don't think Mensor Sulevich is enjoying this game. I think he's working so hard that he's just grinding and thinking, Eight just get over the line, Mensur. Game's not over yet. Kist could easily reel off two good legs here and win this match. Well, that's it. We know. You, you're not, you don't become a, a champion of the world without being able to throw back-to-back 12-dart legs. Six. Christian Kist has that in his locker. If he produces it from his locker in these last two legs, Mensor is going to have to throw some excellent stuff himself. I love that camera yeah. angle because you can see the flight of Christian Kist's darts, how they lean to the left when they hit the board. Very similar to the way that Sulevich's darts fly in. Whoa. Wonderful grouping from Sulevich. Mm. Great camera angle. You can see when they're coming in here, they kick to the left. And you can see when it was doing it with a second dart, it was the flight that actually deflected it underneath. Great camera work. So ideally, Christian Kist, really, his, his ideal first dart is probably quite high in the treble and over to that left-hand side. Absolutely, because he can actually bang it into that dart on the right-hand side of the barrel. Yeah. Well, trading ton 40s, these two. Kist needs to find one treble. He's got that. What? And it is just the one. Leaves him Shanghai to take us all the way to a last-leg decider. We've not seen a last leg decided this evening. They've all been pretty clear wins. A couple of 6-2s and a 6-3. This one is close. Nice the one Christian win that Mensor Sulevic does have over Christian Kist was a big one. When it's gone close before, Christian Kist has always come through it. But he's not going to take out the 120. Whoa. And Mensor 104. 104. To complete the victory... He's going to get a dart. Now, what do you want, Mensor? Oh, Mensor. The Mensor. There Mensor. it is. Oh, Finished on double 14. Mensor. And Christian Kist, a classic case of double 15 Mensor angst. You cannot stand there and watch Mensor Sulevich, even with one dart in his hand, have a go at double 14 because the vast amount of times he is going to take it out. Kisses his favourite double as well. Mensur Sulevich somehow coming through that. After an absolute nightmare on the doubles at the start of the game. The gentle is through. He will face Joe Cullen for a place in the quarterfinals of the Happy Bet European Darts Open. That game will be tomorrow afternoon, but we've got four more matches on the way this evening. Rob Cross, the new sensation in PDC Darts. Yellow Larson, a former world champion. The all-conquering Michael Van Gerwen and the world number three Peter Wright. Wright against Robbie Green on next. Der Kist ist ja absolut mein schwerster Gegner, ich glaube, ich habe so schlechte Ergebnisse gegen ihn, ich habe mir heute sehr, sehr schwer getan und ich habe auch so schlecht gespielt, aber ich möchte mich entschuldigen bei meinem Publikum, bei meinen Fans, ich habe trotzdem mein Bestes gegeben, Gott sei Dank hat gereicht. Du hast gewonnen, ich wollte gerade sagen. Und eigentlich kann auch ein Mensch nicht schöner enden als auf der Doppel-14, Na, das hat zumindest geklappt. Genau deswegen habe ich meine Doppel-14 geküsst, das ist... <lacht> Mein Retter heute. <lacht> du hast eben gesagt, schon oft gegen ihn verloren, hat es eine 1-4-Bilanz vor dem Match. Woran liegt sowas? Warum spielt man gegen einen nicht so erfolgreich und gegen den anderen irgendwie viel, viel lieber? Er ist ja trotzdem ein Weltmeister, muss man akzeptieren. Und ich habe immer einen riesengroßen Druck. Ich bin noch immer niemand eigentlich. Aber er ist ein Weltmeister und deswegen habe ich immer einen riesengroßen Respekt von solchen Spielern. Und deswegen muss ich mich doppelt mehr fokussieren. Leider funktioniert nicht, aber ich hoffe bald. <lacht> Joe Cullen, das ist der nächste Gegner im Achtelfinale. Der spielt stark zurzeit. Das könnte schwer werden. Absolut. Ich mag ihn überhaupt nicht, muss ich sagen. <lacht> als Spieler, aber nicht als Mensch. Er ist ein super Kerl, ein super Mensch. Er spielt im Moment Weltklasse. Ich gebe mein Besten. Schauen wir mal. Morgen einen anderen Tag. Schauen wir mal. Ja, wir freuen uns drauf. Danke dir, Mensur. Mensur Suljovic. Mal sehen, was das morgen.